Hey y'all, welcome to the Clock Tower. I'm Colton, here with Brandon. This time it's my turn to uh, be the one who introduces the deck. I'm on Review Starlight, the eight pants list that I put out on the channel earlier this week. It's a level one Magro into a level three that grants burn ones when you reveal a soul trigger on your final attack. Brandon, I see that it's Alice. Yeah, this is the Alice deck that I actually brought to Chicago, being able to put it on the channel, but also to kind of test a little bit where review's at as well. Yeah, and I, I actually asked you to play Alice into this matchup because there are some things that I think Starlight can do to handle things like Alice. It's not better than Alice by any extent, right? It is very much on the outside looking in when it comes to the actual meta, but it has some pieces that allow it to kind of hang tight with some of these better, more uh, board-based decks, especially the ones that bring out level twos, because you have a really good level two killer that we're going to get to see. So I don't think this deck is bad. I don't think it's great. It struggles to plus. Like, even after we did my video and the recording of this, like, I've I've been making tweaks to try to fix some of the plussing issues the deck has. But like here, you know, we get a plus off of the runner, because you're playing... I think four runners at minimum of one kind or another. Um, you could potentially play more, but I get pushed into one, which is fine because I have the double combo. So my hand is decent. I slam the CX and, you know, we're going to have six hand post combo, which isn't bad. We're also going to actually have the combo push turn. And we want to get to one first in this matchup anyway, just because we don't want to try to clear Alice with our combo pieces. We want to get a combo where we can win board so that even if we lose it coming back, which we expect that we will, we get the opportunity to then play the level two killers to deal with Alice. That makes sense. I kind of just do the Alice thing, right? Like the deck's built to do one thing. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah. despite knowing you have level two killers, like my deck only does. Yes, that's what the deck is trying to do, obviously, because it's the one thing it does. But also I think you're trying to you're okay with that, right? Mm -hmm. Like, if you can, if, you, if someone can clear your board and you're at 13, you know, like, if you can back up to 13, 13, 5, and they can still get there, like, okay, you know? And you can prepare for that to a certain extent by, you know, making sure you get more Alice's and more ways to recur. It's annoying, but it's not something that the Alice player can't overcome. I think this could catch an Alice player by surprise because... I think if you're in Swiss and you're on Alice, you, you look across the table and you see Review Starlight, you're going to go, okay, this deck doesn't do anything. Well, it does. It has a couple of pieces that can actually deal with your Alice board, so if you're not prepared for this matchup, it can get you. Yeah, yeah no, absolutely. Like Especially with this deck, Alice can back up in, on a good day up to that kind of like 14k, um, which is a little bit outside of most 2k killers. Or two level two killers, rather. So that way they can try to defend even then. So, like, they can actually get pretty defensive here, right? So, like, mm -hmm. if everything goes well, we're in that spot. Um, here, I am a little strapped for stock at this point. I actually, I want to bring this up because... You play Alice in a way that I think is a little bit more unique than um, the ways that some other people might play Alice. You are very intentional. You want to triple Alice every time you can. And, like, most people are content with two Alices. They almost play to two Alices. Whereas you are always building the resources necessary to get to three. You didn't get the third this time because you missed one of the Brainstormers, but... You are intent on getting to three. Yeah. Well, actually, fun fact. The last card in Dex Alice, I had one buried in stock early on. But, yeah, no, no. The, the, to be able to try to get three Alice's on board, I think is actually, like, pretty crucial with this deck. Only because, like, I recognize I, I tend to spe overspend resources here to make that happen. In part because I think the ability to also then deny my opponent any kind of board advantage is mm -hmm. like, crucial for how Alice actually wins games, right? Alice doesn't necessarily win games in the end, in the back end of it, despite having, in this case, with Argo, a pretty explosive top end. They can kind of try to make up some of that ground. But Alice wins games at level one. 
Mm -hmm. And being able to starve resources as early as level one, potentially turn two, right? Like, if, for example, I go second, you push me to one on the next turn, I want to be able to put Triple Alice on board because the sooner I get that on board, the sooner I can start just taking away three cards from your hand every turn. Alice, a triple Alice is a plus nine. If your opponent doesn't have the tools to deal with it. Like, at best, if your opponent is still at one like I am, you're going to still win a couple of those Alice swings on on the return. Which is why I think it's so important that this 2k killer is as good as it is for Review Starlight. Because it's on player, reveal the top card, if it's a character, which we saw, gain 2,000 power. When it faces a level 2, gain 6. It's already 11-5 on its own, which is enough to at least force the backup. But then you have the back row, Brainstormer, which can grant 500, and the CX, which can grant another 1,000. You're at 13, and in this case, that clears what you have. I only can get up to 12-5 with the counter I have in play. So because I only have one of the... Alice this is in the back row. I only get 500 mm-hmm. global, so my Alice is only sitting at 10-5. And there are other ways to grant power in this deck as well. Like, there's the Rico, which probably would have been the third lane um, if you had had... You know, if I had seen you pick up the 3k counter, or if um, you had the second Alice in the back row, the 1-0 Alice. So I there's there are other ways to grant power here. There's a Shimakai in this list as well. So it's not hard to pump one of those yeah. lanes up. And then you also have the back row zero that can grant a thousand when you get a reverse. So Starlight has the power tools to actually get reverses against level two targets, which as long as Alice is unbanned is going to matter a lot. So being able to, and now now you're in kind of a, you know, you're you're in a bit of a tough spot here. Like you got your Alice's back because you hit the two on the brainstorm. So you're going to get your Alice's back, but you have to draw into, because I know what's in your hand. You have to draw into both the CX and you'll hit your Alice on the Brainstorm, or you need to draw into your CX swap and a Climax, or I know it's hard for you to get this combo back down again. So I play the event here, which get allows me to get a zero. However, no Climax swap yet. So not having access to Climax swap here is kind of annoying because I would have been able just to then, like you said, combo again here and actually get some decent advantage mm-hmm. going here. But yeah, and this is, you know, um, at the moment, my, hand, my hand's a little small, but so you actually forced me to have a small hand mm-hmm. because of that. Um, but I'm kind of banking on you not being able to repeat the turn. You yeah, just and that's where kind of Re- Review Starlight's kind of uh, ability to deal with Alice really ends, honestly, is you can clear it once, which honestly is good enough. Because if you can make them, the Alice player specifically, have to replace the Alice, use the resources, both the cards and the stock, to replace the Alice, either with the backup or by having to go get the Alice back itself, you, like you said, you're playing with a really small hand here now. I know that your top end needs more resources than this, right? So right now, I'm in a place where I'm limiting what your top end can do. And this goes for any top end. If it's Kirito, if it's Silica, if it's Alice, if it's Rosario, it doesn't matter. They need resources. And by forcing them to use stock and cards to get their board back, they are less able to use their top end. So you're shutting off a lane of Argo. You're shutting off a lane of Silica. You're shutting off you know, a Mother's Rosario, a Mother's Rosario down the stretch. Because you dealt with their resources in the mid-game. This is how you beat Alice. So I am able to get one of them back. I'm not able to get the power pump on this one, and I know you have the backup, but again, I want you to use resources. So I am very, I'm 100% okay with losing this lane. Here, I'm at 2-2, you're at 2-1. I'm just going to push some damage. And then you're going to realistically probably push me into 3, and then I'm going to have a chance to swing for close. That's the goal here. So you do back it up, which again, it takes a stock and a card away from you, which I'm totally fine with that. We push the damage, you go into three. I'm at 2-2. I'm very happy to see you go to three when I'm at 2-2 and you only have four stock. 
So now my goal here is to, you know, survive, which I should be able to from 2-2. And then turn around and try to close. I have the resources to close. I have, like, the, the stock and the cards necessary. I just need to basically have another card that I can play from my hand and I'll be okay. That's foreshadowing. Hmm. So I do not like the damage spread here um, for obvious reasons. You don't enjoy being a level behind? I would prefer not to be a level behind. Um, Fair enough. I guess I, see, I can see you're not playing Gura then. So that's funny for multiple reasons. Continue. So I re I end up just deciding to push it a little bit, trying to get you into three. Like I recognize, like that's not the best plan here, but at the same time, I also expect you to cancel a little bit more here. Yeah. To be fair, I'm like it says it says I have no CXs in my waiting room. That's a thing with um, Weiss fight where sometimes JP cards don't count as climaxes in your waiting room but i do have as you just saw a handful of climaxes in there but I've, i still have three in deck you you have two in waiting room like i'm expecting you to have a lot more climaxes in there i know you triggered some but yeah I, i've triggered once at this point and i have two in my hand so i've got three in my deck i think i have four because i forgot about my stock so at this point like during the game i thought i had four in the deck still because i forgot that i had triggered but yeah like, it's, you have enough climaxes in there, I expected you to cancel them more, so I didn't expect you to actually to beat a three. Um, I was just trying to help build up a little bit more resources, so that way on the next turn I could actually like close you out, and hopefully get enough cancels. And then, uh, you couldn't see that, but I just lost the game, um, because I drew a climax, clocked it, and immediately drew both of the other climaxes in my deck. I have four climaxes in my hand right now. I think I have one more in deck, which I don't, so I brainstormed for not. I have uh, four CXs, a 1-0 event that I can't play unless I tap two characters, and I have two other characters in my hand. I play the Stock Healer, because why not? It's the only thing I have. And then I play the Backup. The early play Backup. Feels bad. This is my board. I slam the CX. And hope that it's enough. It's not enough. I really wanted to show off the top end because I really like the top end. It's my favorite part of the deck. But in a 10-card deck, I drew and then clocked into two more climaxes. In a 10-card deck with three climaxes in it. I did the math afterward, by the way, because I was really tilted. Uh, uh, the odds of me doing that are 1 in, like, 121. If I had drawn a single playable, I would have been fine. Because then I would have um, been able to tap the Brainstormer and the other playable in my back row to top check five and get my combo piece. So I could have actually like done something combo related. But uh, alas and alack, I was unable to do so. So I had to watch helplessly as my two swings canceled. So the hope here was that I was going to show that the deck like is better than people are giving it credit for by beating Alice, and then um, I had the worst possible draw on the final turn of the game, so that feels pretty bad, but I do think that this deck does have a better ceiling that people give it credit for. I think the top end is good. I think it deals with Alice specifically pretty well, and I think it has like a bunch of competent profiles, like the Ricky is generically good, the Brainstormer is generically good, the Drop Searcher is generically good. Like, there isn't there isn't a lack of, like, the classic good cards. It just doesn't have any of those, like, explosive profiles that put it over the top. It doesn't have the double-plussing, you know, triple-plussing, potentially, combo in Alice. It doesn't have the, um, you know, the, the really explosive top end that kills from 2-0. It doesn't have these broken cards that a lot of modern sets do. It's just, like, a classic good cards deck in the same way that, like, a Don Machi is. Honestly, it plays very similarly to Don Machi, I think, in a lot of ways. Um, it feels a lot like Fate in a lot of ways as well. It's a very similar kind of thing to that. But I don't know if the profiles are quite as 
tuned in some of the, in some cases, although it does have more of like the again generic good profiles that Fate sometimes lacks. So the deck is fun. Play the deck. If you like Review Starlight, play the deck. I do recommend it. It's better than people think it is, but that doesn't necessarily make it great. But it can compete with good decks if some things go right. It does have game plans into better decks, which is something that can't really be said for some of these other older sets that have dropped in the last year or so uh, that came to English a couple years after they really should have. Well, sadly, we didn't get to see the top end. I think the top end is actually... If you go watch Five Cards, Five Minutes, we explain the top end. We did a Five Cards, Five Minutes where we talk about the top end. I also have a deck video where we talk about the top end. If you want to see what the top end does, you should go look at those videos. We'll even link them in the description. But I also think having that kind of toolboxy set allows you to be able to play into things and have access to be able to mm-hmm. reach those tools when you need them, right? Like you were able to get the level two killers for the turn you needed the mm-hmm. level two killers, right? Like you had access to the tools in which you needed and the ability to step over with that power line and what yeah. you need to do. Like you had the answers to the Alice board. You had the, so you were able to pull those answers out and use them effectively. And if I had had literally any oh. other draw than the three climaxes in the deck of 10, I would have been able to do more things. So I'm like still annoyed about that. This game happened a couple of days ago now as we're recording this. Like yesterday, I think. I don't know. But I I was so upset when it happened, and I'm still kind of annoyed. It's camera shy. It's what I actually tend to refer to. Because like realistically, the number of times that I have played against this deck and you just... I think it is like the first time I played the second to you where I didn't actually play the combo, which of course it happens on the one that we record for the channel. But it is what it is. It's a fun deck. I do recommend it. It's fun. It's got some pieces. It's got some tools. Like, it's generically good. Um, And if you like Review Starlight, it's definitely worth it. If you just like good art, because the art is really good on these cards. Like, the SRs are so, so good. So be sure to check it out. Check out the video, etc. Links. You know how that works. In the meantime, on Tuesday, we'll have a clock talk. On Thursday, five cards, five minutes. The following Tuesday, Brandon will have a deck tech. Then we'll have more gameplay in two weeks. Until next time, thank you so much for joining us. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe, and have a good one. We'll see you then.